Hi, and welcome to a new episode of the Sustainable Cannabis Coalition podcast, in which we talk all things sustainability with some of the most distinguished experts in the cannabis industry. This week, our host Dana Hillman will be talking with Eric Myers from Omega, one of the leading suppliers in the cannabis industry, and with Jeff and Peggy Hollenbeck of Benaleaves, a processor and producer of medical cannabis products in Ohio. They'll be talking about sustainability in the supply, processing, and packaging of cannabis products. Hi, Eric, Peggy, and Jeff. Thanks so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Happy, Happy to be here. here. Thank you so much for having us here today. Oh, no, it's great to have you. So for those of you who haven't heard of Omega Supply, they were a spinoff of a 100-year-old company that's focused on the cannabis industry and offer everything from cultivation supplies to processing supplies and everything a dispensary would need. Now, Benna Leaves is a customer of theirs and based in Ohio, and they provide high-quality cannabis products to consumers. They, like Omega, take sustainability seriously, and it's a factor in every decision they make. But before we dig into that, and believe me, this will be an interesting uh, episode for you all, but I'd like to give our listeners a bit of context. So let's quickly go around the virtual coffee table, and if I could have each of you introduce yourselves and share a bit about you, that would be great. So Peggy, if we can start with you, then Jeff and Eric, that would be a great start. So Peggy, I'll shut up and I'll let you go. <laughs> Uh, all good. Hi, my name is Peg Hollenbeck. I'm one of the managing partners and owners of Benna Leaves. Uh, we are a Ohio medical marijuana processing uh, plant in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I am in this business with my husband, Jeff, and our partner, Bill Williams. And the three of us are working partners in the company. We uh, provide medical marijuana uh, products to pa qualified patients under the 22 medical conditions in the state of Ohio. Very cool. Jeff, yourself? So I'm a FDA um, thermal process authority. I, my background is, um, you know, I was a chef for 25 years. Um, the last 20 years, I have been um, working with uh, uh, McCall Farms, um, one of the largest consumer packaged uh, companies in the United States providing canned goods, uh, branded canned goods all over the United States. Um, and uh, came to the marijuana business um, really due to some family matters and, and looking at what was kind of what was going on in the industry. Um, you know, there, mm -hmm. was a, there was a big push um, towards edibles in the marketplace. And, and that's, yeah. that, that's been an ongoing trend. And, you know, so when we looked at my, my uh, skill set, Bill's skill set, because Bill, Bill is a big consumer packaged goods uh, sales background, um, you know, uh, Coca-Cola, um, Pepsi-Cola, um, <clears throat> uh, McCall Farms. Um, yeah, the big know, boys. Yep. Yeah, so, so he, knows, he knows his way around the grocery store. And um, so bringing that skill set and, uh, of course, you know, Peg brings her skill set of uh, marketing and, um, you know, r really, she's uh, she's my go to when it comes time to uh, review the, the food products, because uh, <laughs> let's just suffice it to say that some people that they won't they won't tell me if something's not tasting the way that it should. And Peg never <laughs> failed. <laughs> No hesitation. <laughs> no hesitation. <laughs> What's kept uh, our marriage around alive all these years? But um, no, I, you know, so when we started when we started talking about this, we, we looked at at uh, what, what was going on in the marketplace, and and we felt very strongly about the fact that we could come to the processing only marketplace. So as a standalone processor in the state of Ohio, you know what we do is we buy. Um, we, we buy tested biomass from one of the Ohio grows um, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we t we t make that into medicine and we sell that medicine and Peg, you can probably go into um, types, but we sell that medicine to the, the, the all of the dispensaries in the state of Ohio. And we have a variety of different products. Yeah, that's awesome. 
And I think um, we've got one of our founding members here too, uh, Eric with Omega. And Eric, if you'd quickly introduce yourself, that would be great as well. Sure. I'm Eric Myers. I am uh, general managing the Omega project. As Dana mentioned, uh, we're a subsidiary of a much larger company that's been around for over 100 years uh, that specializes in doing basically the same thing that we're doing for the cannabis industry, for the food service industry. Uh, we decided, uh, we found we were selling into the cannabis market through cannabis kitchens because we do commercial kitchens all day long. And mm -hmm. so that was sort of our, our toe in the pool into the cannabis industry. From there, it made a lot of sense for us to take our core competency as a supply chain solution, distributor, and sourcing expertise and apply that to the cannabis industry. And through some strategic partnerships, we've grown very quickly and um, have been able to offer a wide variety of products, like you said, to the three verticals of cultivation, processing and manufacturing and dispensaries and retail uh, nationwide and into Canada. That's great. I, I have to say one of the things that, because I've had the pleasure of speaking with all of you before, you know, when we're talking about sustainability and we're definitely going to dig into, um, you know, what, what Peg and Jeff are doing and their initiatives. But the thing that struck me is the fact that, you know, Eric, even you having um, been leaves on right now, I mean, you've got more than just a business relationship. It's tighter. And and maybe you can explain a little bit about that and how this all came about and how you guys are, are continually working to help your, your customer base. Sure. And I mean, it's uh, having customers like Jeff and Peggy is easy. Uh, they actually came over to us from they were customers on our food service side. So they've known us for decades um, in another <laughs> capacity. And when they came over <laughs> to the cannabis side of the business. Uh, they needed a lot of the same things and they knew that we could supply them. So they were one of our one of our toes that was dipped into the pool very early on, uh, even before we had an Omega equipment and supply business set up. So we really believe we don't want to be the, you know, kind of drive by shop. Our, our goal is to develop relationships with the biggest and best in the industry. And I truly believe that Ben Leaves walks that walk as well as talks the talk that you'll hear about today. And our consultative approach, our very hands-on approach is really critical to that, making sure that we have the relationships with our customers so that we can be that trusted advisor to them, help them make more money, help them make better decisions on products. Anything that we can do to help them be more efficient or more profitable, that's what we see our role as, as being in this industry. Well, and it, it's interesting. One of the things that really stood out in our last conversation is Peg and Jeff. Um, during our conversation, there was just this underlying, <laughs> it's not even a theme. It is just woven in your fibers there. You hate waste. <laughs> and I think um, I think that was really interesting. I think it, it started with, you know, one of your vape cartridges. Maybe you could just unpack that a little bit and, and tell me where that comes from. You know, I'm going to let Jeff take much of this but but to your point not only do we hate waste on the packaging side but you know you mentioned earlier eric and dana that um i'll take it metaphorically you know we don't like the waste relationships either and i and i you know the sustainability goes into your partnership with who supports you with your supplies and what have you and you know eric mentioned i don't want to to count how many decades we have done business on the food service side with that company because <laughs> that, that it's been many um but relationships like those had allowed us to seamlessly uh, build out this facility with equipment that will allow jeff to make the products that we do so we really appreciate the relationship that we have engendered over the years when eric brings brought some uh, additional uh, staff members here. You know, I, I ran into a salesperson that I had 20, 30 years ago. And that is, oh, that wow. is just so cool. That is well, cool. And, and not only that, but, you know, I, I can remember thinking about, um, because, you, you know, remember at the end of the day, I had been to many manufacturing plants, but I'd never run one. And a lot mm -hmm. of things that I was seeing out there, I was kind of scratching my head going, I wonder why they're doing it that way. You know, because the the mindset that I brought to 
the, the manufacturing end of things was, okay, well, I know what I need. I need full-size sheet pans. I need speed racks. I need Lexan containers. I need... Uh, <clears throat> French fry scoops. A growing... Yeah, <laughs> the French fry scoop is actually one of my favorites because we were walking through uh, uh, the, uh, the Wasserstrom Superstore here, and um, I had been watching my guys... Um, you know, when they're loading the extractor, they have to put um, ground up biomass down a five inch hole that's five feet long. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's you, you, they're standing on a little step stool. It's a little un, un, uh, uncomfortable. And they were always every day there was, you know, a couple couple ounces of marijuana on the ground or on the sheet pans that we laid underneath the machine. And I'm walking through the superstore and I look over and I see the French fry scoop and I'm like. That's it. That's perfect. Because you know, we can, we can, you know, the the mouth on the scoop is such that you can pick up exactly what you need and pour it in without losing any. So that's just one little simple restaurant tool that you know we've sort of repurposed. Necessity is the mother of invention. So <laughs> we we sell exactly we sell right. that on the website now, but um, we rebranded it as a, a biomass scoop instead of a French fry. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Dual right. use scoop. You gotta love it. <laughs> and and technically no, potatoes are biomass, so I think that's it's still <laughs> that's still true. Works. <laughs> well, I think you guys but you can, also you know yeah yeah go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry to get that. No, no, please. I'm not going anywhere at all. <laughs> go ahead. Well, there, go ahead. I think, and no, I was really curious, too, because I think when you first started looking at vape cartridges as well, you were looking at, you know, everyone's buying these things, tossing them. And that was an athme to you as well. So how, yeah. did you come over, how did you work around that? Well, you know, w- w- we had to follow the marketplace when we came here. And um, there were, you know, there was a lot of um, issues with er- with some of the early hardware. And Peg, I'll, you know, feel free to jump in and speak about that at any point in time. But the the market was for completely disposable pens. So when I say that, what I mean is that the it has the 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 cartridge, the battery, and the the device to be able to smoke it is all in one, and mm-hmm. it's sold as one. Now, the, therein lies the problem for me in that, okay, I've got something that's got a lithium ion battery in it, stainless steel, borosilicate glass that's absolutely recyclable, but nobody's, yeah. nobody's allowing that to happen because of the, because of the marijuana c- contamination. And, you know, it's wow. just, it's, it's sad because, you know, uh, you know, what, what, we're selling thousands and thousands and thousands of these cartridges. It's not just us. Everybody's using the same, basically the same piece of hardware. Um, but um, what, what happened was that there, there were some bad disposables in the marketplace earlier. It wasn't the ones that we had, but there were mm-hmm. bad ones. There were a lot of battery failures, and, and the Columbus marketplace said, we don't want any more disposable pens. So. This this is a you know we we refer to the the marijuana industry as uh, being in dog years because if uh, anything that happens today it, it's it's it happens so fast you just don't even know what's going what's going on what, and that's what, what happened with go ahead Peg well and to that point Jeff that you know we had to by state code use those pens and we're, we're thrilled that we have moved from those but at the same time. When we were faced with looking at what packaging we were going to use, the the amount of over packaging, you know, because we need to have things child proof and there are a lot of right, other parameters. Right. But what I was finding when we were doing initial research is I have rheumatoid arthritis and there are so many packages mm-hmm. of things that I can't open. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm like, God, wait, wait, I'm sick. using this as medicine, but I can't get to my medicine without, you know using a knife and severing an artery and then I'm throwing away oh, wow. all of these everything the 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 inlay the the over uh the sleeve to cover it and so when we were faced with having to use the disposable pen we were putting them in mylar bags and then now fortunately 
the state has has uh, changed its parameters and we can use carts. I mean, there are still some ways, but um, you know, we are now looking at using, and Jeff, I'll let you jump in, our new bag from Omega that we're using. And, and uh, tell me about that. Actually, that was, that was kind of cool too. Mm -hmm. Um, just help me out because Jennifer's working on three different bags right now. So <laughs> our our original replacement is um, we we've kind of cut the use of that back just because in um, this was this was kind of a telling moment. But you know we have our uh, our MMCP uh, agent in every ninety days to check on us to inspect us and make sure that we're following the rules and that uh, the place is up to standards and um i sat down with jennifer and i said jennifer i said i got a big problem here i said take a look at this this mylar bag it's got this child lock in it and according to the rules if i put a, a cartridge or a gummy or cookies into that bag i have to close the child lock for it to be child lock mm -hmm. but it also has a primary induction seal on the top and I said, okay, look, so how about if I just close the primary induction seal and leave the child lock open because Peg can't open that child lock. I mean, I'll be honest with you, neither could Jennifer. I gave it to, well, I gave it to our agent and I said, I said, here, you try to open it. And she tried for a couple minutes and she couldn't get it open. And that's just, wow. so it's unfriendly to, because Peg will tell you that the, you know, the, the average customer out there how what, what's the uh, age on the average customer? Peg? Well, you know, someone in my age range. So <laughs> <laughs> thirty five. Right, thirty five. <laughs> At any rate, it, 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 age doesn't matter. It's just it, it was the it was the right selection for three. We cut our waste on the from going from a disposable to a cartridge only. We cut the waste in by seventy percent. And I'm, they've wow. also been through a number of iterations of this this is never you know never first time final and if you look back at where they started where it was a, a, an insert tray into a cardboard box that was shrink wrapped that was put into a, a case pack that was put into a master case pack all this card to dispensaries and if dispensaries near you are like dispensaries near us uh spaces at a premium they're often post stamp size storage room uh, both for security and just for practicality space um and so i mean talk talk to them about i mean you were getting uh, yeah. cardboard so, back on your well, deliveries so, yeah so early yeah. early on remember that bill and i and peg all come from big consumer package goods so everything comes mm -hmm. in a cardboard box right well right not, not necessarily in the in the marijuana industry so about a, a month and a half in, we were sending all these beautiful number one cardboard boxes with all this nice safety seal tape out, and they were all coming back on the van, which it, that can't happen from my standpoint because I don't, you know, if, if it once it's left my facility, I don't, I can't take anything back in, okay, because who, you know, who knows what's happened to it, but um. So now we're faced with all these card, you know, 50, 60, 100 cardboard boxes coming back. And I said to Bill, I said, what's going on? He goes, because they got no room for the cardboard boxes and they can't see in the cardboard boxes. So they can't count the stuff. So they're having to take it out of the box to count it. And I said, well, why don't we just change it to a Ziploc bag? You know, everything, everything gets <laughs> delivered by hand. So we changed from a cardboard box um to that ziploc bag again we, we cut probably 70 percent of the cost and also you know there's just about about 70 percent of the material out so those two things right there and then and then we changed to the pop top container um and the pop top container is 100 percent recyclable and it's made in the usa so uh the, all, all things that i like and um Jennifer at Omega uh, is the one that uh, helped us put that, that pop top deal together, and it's good for it's good yeah. for Megan. It's it's especially good for me. Well, and and I also to, like the story. 
I was going to tell the story about the the Ziploc bag. Peggy, if you want to tell them what that really is, because that's right. another found item <laughs> right. that's being you know used in a new and novel way. Right. So you know, Jeff's like, "Well, how about a Ziploc bag?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah I want to look." So, so this was right around uh, at the beginning of COVID, and we found um, what is known as a stadium bag that is Ziploc that is no. used for football stadiums, arenas, concerts that are see through so that you know for security purposes well they weren't yeah, selling but there's yeah, plenty they of those were, laying around <laughs> a lot of them right now so and again what we're seeing in the dispensaries is a lot of the people they're like oh wow you know i could reuse that bag for blah 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 so it and it's as to jeff's point you know we want to support the 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 bud tenders at the dispensaries who are very very pressed with time bring that bag in they can look right in um we have our our products banded in there and then they can just take them out and pack them and they they just we have gotten nothing but amazing oh thank you so much i don't have to trip over all these boxes and so um, what so now instead of 12 12 mile our bags in a cardboard box with a piece of ballast paper in there it's 12 little pop tops um you know, in a plastic bag, um, with, you know, that, that works absolutely just fine. And, and anybody can open it with one hand. So even with the tamper evident, um, tape on there, they can just pop it really easily. So it's a super friendly container. We reduced, we reduced our costs. We reduced our, our waste. Um, you know, we're not there and we want to get to the point where we've got a, a, a robust recycling program for the for the cartridges and the pens, but but it's not there yet. <laughs> got to got to figure. Yeah, it's a, a great, it's a great solution. Way. Yeah, it's a great solution for you know for for Benna leaves. It's a great solution for the dispensary customers that they have because uh, you know the the stadium bags that they use are, are see through by definition, and they can take mm-hmm. those inventories very easily and see what they're getting. They can also they're hangable on a slat wall, so they you know they can hang flat. Uh, to take use, take advantage of the space that the dispensaries do have. And so, again, it's a win all the way around. And when we talk about sustainability, everybody thinks, oh, my gosh, that's going to cost me more money. And really, with the creative thinking and really understanding your customer, their needs, and, of course, then obeying the regulations of the state, there are ways that you can have a win-win-win where you can meet those requirements, you can save money in uh, in doing the packaging you can save the waste in the packaging and make it easier for the dispensary customer i don't see how anybody would not want to do that no that seems like a, as you said eric that's a win-win for everybody i mean it's impactful for the waste stream reducing that material that goes out in landfills and so forth and yeah just having that um having the customer being able to actually see what they have and, and save space that's incredible so that's cool. Now, Jeff, one of the things is funny. I will get back to the French fries. Oh, <laughs> take that back. It's a biomass. Yes, yeah, biomass. It's not a French fry screw. <laughs> but um, you were using that for extraction. And one of the things that was fascinating for me is, I, I guess, and maybe this is your eye for continuous improvement with you know your your FDA background, but you took a look at some of the, I, I guess, what other people would call waste and you turn that into usable product. Can you maybe unpack that a little bit as well? Sure. So, um, you know, as a, as a chef, um, they'll, they'll, they train you that if you've got a chicken, you need to use every part. So you're going to use the, the little bit, little bit, little bitty wing tips and the backbone and all of the chicken fat and skin to make stock. And then you've got uh, some edible portions out of that. So I take that same approach to everything we do. If I'm looking at what the biomass that we bring in, I wanna use every single part of that plant. So by statute, again, we're required to destroy the stuff that comes out of the extractor, the, the green material. And I say green material because it has no it has no THC value. It's just it's like dried parsley or something. But uh, we have to we have to gotcha. d- destroy that by grinding it with um, cardboard. And um, another portion that uh, I was t- took a great interest in was um, early on uh, 
one of the guys that was working for me that had come here from Arizona and had uh, several years of experience was uh, was doing some winterizing. And do, when we winterize, what we do is we mix um, crude oil with ethanol and freeze it at minus 50 degrees. And the, 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 mm. the um, lipids congeal in the ethanol, and then we can strain them out. So we're straining them out because lipids, they taste bad when you, when you smoke them. You know, you'll know right away when you've got um, bislet or oil that's got lipids in it because it, it like coats your mouth when you first inhale. And oh, um, so it's not desirable at all. It's something you want to get out of there. And um, so they, they, they were straining the lipids out. And I said, Shane, what do you do with those? He goes, oh, we just throw them out. I said, well, why do you throw them out? He goes, well, there's, they're no good. I said, what do you mean they're no good? It's it's a plant product. I mean, it's got to have some value. I said, "Have you ever tested them?" And he goes, "No." Nope. And I said, "Well, okay, we'll pack, let's pack up two couple three grams and send it up to the lab and see what they say." The lab came back and said, "By the way, those lipids are forty seven percent THC." And yeah, oh, wow. so okay. I got so here I have a, a plant fat that can be used for anything. And it's free. I mean, you know, it's, it doesn't cost me anything. I mean, I, I could assign a cost right. to it, but it also keeps me from throwing it out. Okay, and and we've got a great we've got a great cannabis based ingredient to use in our lotions and in our capsules, and that's what we do. So so part of the reasons that our capsules are so effective is that there's not just THC and there's there's other marijuana ingredients that are helping. That's incredible. Um, like I said, the the fact of the matter that you know people talk sustainability, but you guys have, uh, for lack of a better word, distilled that down to a um, almost like a science with your uh, production operation. It's really refreshing to hear that. So I, I continually to be impressed every time I talk to you guys. So well, and he's sharing. being modest. Thank he, he's being modest. He even tried to get extract from roots too. <laughs> we did <laughs> everything. No, we we got we got the uh, actually. You know, when they when they cut the plants down, the roots come out of the root balls too. And um, you know, there was some thought process that we might be able to synthesize THCA crystals or um, CBD out of the roots. Eh, it it that particular research project didn't go too far. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can back Peggy up. I think that Jeff's being very modest about uh, both his abilities and the entire operation, because uh, like you said, we often are, are very fortunate to be allowed to take our new associates to Benelieves, to the facility, to learn from Jeff and Peggy, from their mouths, from walking through their facility so that, you know, it's a complicated industry. And a lot of people don't come to it naturally. They don't have any background in it if they're in a sales role or, or another role with the company. And so having them see a very well-run FDA quality facility as their first experience is exceptionally impactful for our employees. We've been very fortunate to be in a lot of facilities and been able to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. And they all exist. And I really want them to start. I know that, you know, some of the facilities that we were in early days, uh, I was very impressed with when I first went there because I had never seen anything to compare it to. And then I saw Jeff and Peggy's facility and I'm like, oh, this is how you do it. I get it now. And it really changed my perspective on how the business can be run. It is preparing us for federal legalization because that's a, a hurdle that everyone needs to be thinking about. It's it's in the future, but it's not far right. enough in the future that you can not talk about it at this point. And uh, Ben and Leaves has set up an operation that is prepared to make that transition. And there are many out there that are not, that are either not using the right tools or not using the right processes that when this becomes an FDA regulated industry across the nation, that they're gonna have to retool. And that's gonna be unneeded expense and they may actually be doing themselves a disservice anyway by doing it right now, because like Jeff and Peggy have shown, if you do it right and you do it strategically and smartly, not only are you going to get a better result with your products, but you also can save money. 
um, by being being conservative about your resources and being creative about how you use them. Yeah, I think that's one of my big takeaways just listening to this is, and Jeff and Peggy, I think your mindset of continuous improvement um, carries on through everything, which is wonderful to see. And it, it does sound like it has not only impacted your your business from a, an economic perspective, you're saving money, but you're also putting less garbage out into the, uh, the waste stream. So that's so. Yeah, that's so incredible. one one of the reasons that I know that we have been successful when we first started out, you know, remember I was in the restaurant business. So the the, the trash guy comes every day. Now he comes once a week. Yeah, really. Okay. Great so indication on, on both on both recycling <laughs> and on um, regular trash. You know, so that was oh, that was it. super exciting too. Because again, we're just saving saving money. You know, that's great. Well, I got to tell you, I could talk to you guys all day, um, but unfortunately, we've got to uh, we've got to end. But you know, thanks for for taking the time, all of you, to be here today. And it's it's interesting because very rarely do you have um, a customer and uh, you know their vendor on the line talking about. Um, sustainability and it's more than just lip service and it's certainly evident um with omega because you're founding members of the sustainable cannabis coalition but also with bin leaves i mean the way that you approach your business uh it, it really is more than lip service so thank you so much for taking the time to to be here and to share some of your experiences and your thought processes it's we really appreciate great. you happy having to, us super happy to do so and um the our uh you know our relationship with Omega has been uh, has been really terrific, and I'm looking forward to really enjoy starting to enjoy some of the benefits that uh, are get, are getting set in place. That's great. Okay. Well, again, thanks for taking the time, and Eric, thanks for for bringing on Jeff and Peg. We really appreciate that. You guys are happy awesome. to be here, Eric. Good talking with you, Dan. Yeah, thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sustainable Cannabis Coalition podcast. If you like what you heard, tune into our next episode and make sure to check out our content on our website at sustainablecannabiscoalition.com and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Yep, we're pretty much everywhere. Till next time.